began it all for Alvin Lim. His schoolboy hobby has since grown into an avid love affair with these lovely creatures. Goldfish were first kept as household pets more than 1,300 years ago in China. They were exclusively bred and raised by the Chinese for over 500 years before they were introduced to the Japanese in the 15th century. In recent years, things have changed dramatically for the goldfish. It has evolved into these fancy varieties which were created to satisfy the hunger of hobbyists who wanted more than just goldfish. Perhaps because of its name, the goldfish continues to be the favorite ornamental fish amongst the Chinese. It has been always a, a culture amongst the Chinese to keep fish. Yan yan you yu. Gold, you know, symbolize something good luck. And then later, it become, you know, as they improve the fish, you know, rate even better. It symbolize good luck for the Chinese. So it become a feng shui fish. Goldfish can be divided generally into flat-bodied types or those with egg-shaped bodies. In this part of the world, the goldfish buffs prefer their fish with a more comely and rounded shape. The goldfish originated from a very simple cushion cup, all right, very similar to the cup that we eat, you know. It's green cup. From this, the Chinese have inbred or, you know, have crossbreed and then through mutation also breed into almost 300 varieties of goldfish today. And they come in all shapes, colors and sizes. Okay, here I have a butterfly, okay. The main features of a butterfly is the telescope eyes, right? The telescope eyes must be balanced. And then the, the other main thing is the tail. You can see it has a very beautiful tail. It's, the tail should be spread out, and it looks like a butterfly. Besides the butterfly, there are people who like the uh, more uh, chubby looking ones, like the lion head. Okay, this is a lion head. As I say, the head is the main feature. It should be baby face, cute looking fella, okay? So the head must be well pronounced with the two little cheeks, right? They looking uh, like a, a little puppy like that, you know? so it isn't cute. The other features of a lion head is it doesn't elect the dorsal fin. As a result, make sure a lion head must have a good smooth back. Making cute faces at you are the lion heads and the rondas. They have head growths or wen, which look like a brain. Without a doubt, you've met the bigwig of the tank. But being the largest goldfish does pose a little problem for this aranda, so a hand is always handy. Now, don't turn your noses up on these fellas, known for their pom-poms, which are the small growths near their nostrils. Before you pick on their noses, eyeball these guys. Yes, their eye sacs are as delicate as they look. Sometimes they do burst, but with proper care, they grow again. If you think these fish are heavenly, well, you're not too far off track. These are called celestials because of their eyes turned heavenwards. The only problem is they can't see where they're going. So hobbyists often try not to mix this clumsy group with others in a tank. <laughs> it's no joke keeping fancy goldfish because they're delicate creatures in need of a, a little more tender loving care and attention from their owners. In choosing a good goldfish, one very important thing is never go for a finished fish which is having a very round body, especially for young fish. Now you can see this young fish is a longish body. By the time it develop and grow bigger, the body will develop into a full body which is more round. Robert Frost once said, nothing gold can stay. So to keep their goldfish beautiful, the Vermilion Goldfish Club members have their prized beauties staying away from them. They lease ponds at this farm so their goldfish can be kept in its natural surroundings. In the outdoor, we have this uh, green water. Uh, we make use of nature to filter the water for the goldfish. Okay, what Green water does is actually using photosynthesis. The algae will actually consume the ammonia and the, the end product will just be oxygen, which will make the goldfish grow. And furthermore, the goldfish consume the, the algae, which will further enhance its color. That's why um, it's better to keep goldfish in the outdoor than in the indoor. In green water, 
you cannot see your fish. So people will usually keep the in the equation. Goldfish are hardy eaters. That means they also excrete a lot of waste, which may pollute the tank and cause diseases. So keeping the quality of water in the tank tip top is a must. A new goldfish has to be quarantined before joining the rest of the tank gang. This prevents the existing collection from catching any disease that the newcomer might bring along. The quarantine process is to, to isolate the fish in different tanks from your main collection and to observe them for 30 days. Okay? Depending on what kind of disease comes up during that quarantine period, you will have to uh, apply the correct medication to treat it. So in order to maintain the water quality, we have to do uh, frequent water change, sometimes twice a day. These vegetarians are scavengers and seem to be begging for food all the time. But don't be fooled, goldfish keepers often end up overfeeding their goldfish. So what can you do to give them just enough? Goldfish has a long intestine like tube. So if you feed the fish one time, one go with a lot of food, you just push out. Whatever goes in will come out first, you know. So it's a wastage of food and the fish is uh, not taking up the nutrient plus you will also injure the fish. So uh, automated feeder is one solution where you can time the feeding. Uh, for example, if you're at home, right? You, they will time the feeding so that the fish still get regular feeding while we are away and they will benefit from this uh, uh, small little feeding. Most of the goldfish owners here work a five-day week and when the weekend comes, you'll often find them at the farm. But when the work week starts, these automatic feeders take over the work of feeding their fish. All right, the goldfish has a clock in their head. All right, five minutes or ten minutes before the the dispensing of food from the feeder, you can see the fish will, will circle just below the feeder and they know it's, it's waiting dinner time or lunch time. You know. So they have certain clock and they have certain memory you know when to get their feeding. Well, that certainly puts to rest the myth that these fancy faces have a seven second memory. Some people may keep the goldfish for its promise of gold. But enthusiasts everywhere firmly believe that the success in grooming a good adult goldfish from young is worth its weight in gold. Fish keeping is an ancient hobby. It began with the Sumerians more than 4,500 years ago. The heat is on. You are seeing gold. These men from Singapore's Ozeki Ranchu Club are gathered on a lazy Sunday morning to find a winner. This is one of several rounds in the fight for the coveted title of the most improved fish of the year. It's a golden opportunity for the guys, and not just fish, to do some showing off through their prized beauties. The Ranchu is the king of the goldfish because of his uh, shape and size. It looks like sumo. A lot of people like a chunky looking fish, you know. Ranchus are an egg-shaped variety of the goldfish family. Another way to identify them is by their smooth arched back and 45 degree angled tail. But how they are classified is what's the most unusual. They are classified according to how they are best viewed. To the Japanese, there's only one type of ranchu, and that is the one that is uh, built from the top. The rest of the other type of uh, breed or strain of uh, so-called ranchus, they are considered as lion head and not a ranchu. Most of the top view ranchus found here come from private breeders in Japan. And Japanese ranchus are more expensive since they are not bred commercially. The price tag attached to the ranchu depends very much on the quality and quantity of supply. In China and Thailand, there are now a growing number of hatcheries breeding ranchus for export. And again, they have special characteristics. Okay, the Chinese ranchu is bred mainly for appreciating from the site in the glass tank. Uh, here I have one. Right. The Chinese fish is more or less, I think they have a really coarse rib with their other fish like a lion head to improve the head size 
they have a more coarser scale. But of course, they are improving their breeding technique now, and there are more new lines that has a more refined scaling as well as color. And see here, the Ranchu, one of the main thing is uh, the curve back, which side view fish emphasize a lot. Next is the angle tail, right? And uh, this is the main criteria for selection of good Ranchu. And of course, the head, right? But of course, in terms of side view, this is what the, as the, the beauty in all aspects is required for a side view. But from the top, you look at the fish, it's not so boxy like a, a top view fish. It's just normal, right? The tail especially, it's not so outstanding. You can see this part here is a bit folded compared with the Japanese fish which fans up like a cherry blossom. Here I have another a Thai, Thai Ranchu. Uh, Thai fish are more refined in terms of the scaling, just the back and the tail. And the tail is already folded. It's, it's not spread out. Thank you.